And the Sixers come into tonight's game against the Hawks in fourth place in the East and sporting the NBA's best home record at 18 and three. But they are one of the league's worst teams when it comes to turnovers. The Hawks lead the league out with 18.7, then the Mavs, the Suns, and the 76ers. And it's ironic because a team as high in the standings as they are, uh, and yet they're they're among the league leaders in turnovers. Uh, Smitty, are these turnovers a serious problem for the Philadelphia 76ers? Anytime you have turnovers, it's a serious problem because you're giving up possessions. And I think is they're not the Golden State Warriors where they can make a possession with the three ball. And I think the one thing for them is, and they're not deep enough for as bench as of today. Uh, I look at the Philadelphia 76ers when it comes down to playoff basketball. You don't want to turn the basketball over because they have a hard time struggling at half court. Turning it over, when you have veterans and you have a guy like Ben Simmons handling the basketball with Butler and Joel Embiid, they got to clear this up because you shouldn't have this type of turnover with the type of team that they have constructed. I agree with Smitty. I believe that uh, those turnovers will be a problem for them. I think this is something that you have to correct. Yes, the Golden State Warriors are able to overcome high turnover nights, but they're the best team in basketball, and they have been for three to four years now. The 76ers don't have that type of leeway. They first of all have to ask themselves, why are we turning the ball over? And once they figure that out, they need to clean it up as they head towards the playoffs and start slowly but surely trying to cut those turnover numbers down. Because in a playoff series where one to two possessions can be the difference between you winning not just the game but the series, you have to value the ball. You can stay in games if you just value the ball and don't kill yourself. And making mistakes like that, and especially turnovers, that's what will happen to you. Joel Embiid will not play tonight. J.J. Redick, however, is available after missing a couple of games. Uh, Jimmy Butler, I want to talk with you guys about him. Is he in the way, or is he making the Sixers better? Well, he's, he's both, because when he plays and he's not a distraction, they've been very good. And obviously, we look at the type of player he is, but when he's a distraction... I look at it as Jimmy Butler's in the way because you you got to start looking at it right now is yes wins and losses unless you ultimately can win a championship with Jimmy Butler being a distraction he's gonna have to find a way and I know the last part you know they've downplayed it but it's still things keep coming up and maybe it's the media added a little bit more to the fire Jimmy has to find a way and yes that's his personality what it comes down to now can you have this type of personality and win games and that's the part for me is I will say yeah because they're winning games but they're not going to be judged in the regular season. They're going to be judged in the playoffs, in my opinion, be will. Uh, I don't think you can, he can continue this. I, I do believe he has had been a distraction at times, and he's been a distraction at other stops. I believe he's a great player. He works hard. He's somebody that you want on your team, but I think this is something that he has to clean up, and this has to be a conversation that he has with himself in the mm -hmm. mirror. He is too good to be caught up and be in these type of conversations. We shouldn't be having a conversation like this by Jimmy Butler. It should be more about his play. Unfortunately, it's been about these incidents from Minnesota, to now in Philadelphia and they don't have the type of team and they don't have enough I'll say veterans to where they can survive this type of thing they have a lot of strong presences in that locker room a lot of strong personalities they all need to be on the same page Jimmy Butler doesn't need to be a distraction and winning sometimes can be like a cologne you can spray it on and it can cover up some of the stink of what's really going on but at some point that cologne that cologne's gonna fade and what really is there you're gonna you know, smell the it problem I had be what we said the other day is you have a big three and Ben Simmons Jimmy Butler and Joel Embiid Ben Simmons is not a factor when you start talking about offense, and I'm not saying because he couldn't shoot the basketball. He's a big point guard who wants to pass. There is no doubt the number one option is Joel Embiid. So you're the second option, and there's nothing wrong with that. And if you're a great player, I, B. Wood, throw it to me early. I can make plays off a of catch and shoot. B. Wood, give it to me, go one-on-one. -on -one. B. Wood gives it to me. But if he's Joel Embiid, I'm going through him, and I'm going to play off him. Whatever numbers I get, Long as we're winning, it shouldn't be anything talked about offense. And to your point, the numbers are still there for Jay. It's not like uh, Embiid's going to score 50 points a game. The numbers can still be there.